Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you from Waikiki Beach. Beautiful, just beautiful day here in Hawaii. Um, I mean, I, I guess if you like that sort of thing, if you like beautiful palm trees and the blue ocean and just perfect, you know, it's so bad here because the water temperature is 85 and the air temperature is 85. So we're just suffering for Jesus here in paradise. Uh, we have a great show for you today. We have as our, our guest today, Paul George. Just to, I normally don't introduce the guest right in the first moment, but I want to let you know the name of this book we're going to be talking about with him is Holy Grit. So that ought to get your attention. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Our guest today is is Paul George. He's written a book called Holy Grit. I, I had not heard of this book. And I don't know how I found it, but when I saw this title, I said, boy, I hope that's a Catholic who wrote that. Then I found out it was Paul George, and so uh, we grabbed him, brought him to our show. Paul, welcome to, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Bear, great to be with you. Thanks. So you're, you're, a, you're, a, you're a Catholic speaker, a husband, a father. Uh, you work with small businesses, or you work with businesses, too. I don't know how small or how big, helping them find their purpose and their, their direction, as well as individuals, right? Big part of what you That's do right. is to inspire people. So, I I, I love this. Uh, you have a bachelor, undergraduate in education, and a master's degree in theological studies. Don't you love theology? I do. Yeah, it's a good it's a good topic. Yeah, man, a little bit of philosophy and a little bit of theology goes a long ways. You know, I was just all of a sudden it flashed to my mind uh, Napoleon Dynamite. Uh, his when his when his brother was getting married and he said he was, wrote that song I love you. I, I forget. I still love, but I still like, I but I still like technology. So you have all a lot of interest. That's, uh, but. that's great that you're quoting <laughs> Napoleon Dynamite. I mean, you know, of all things. And then, you know, in your introduction, I was feeling real sorry for you being in Hawaii. You know, the weather, the the water. You know, I'm here in South Louisiana, and in August, September, it's extremely hot this time of year. But we know you and I have this kind of co commiseration going on here this show will probably be airing weeks after this this conversation but lsu man went down hard their first week they did i mean i'm a huge football fan uh lsu fan down here in louisiana we did pray, play a, a good ranked team so at least it was a you know a, a an admirable uh, opponent i guess you could say but uh yeah people are still hurting it was smash mouth football there. The first half was really rugged, and then something just broke. I don't know what. It, you, you were playing in – where were you guys playing? Was it Orlando or someplace? It yeah, wasn't it was pretty much – it was an away game, so it was a like Florida was, State home But was home it – was that – it was – for some reason I thought they were at a different stadium even. No, they, they were in Orlando. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, but uh, obviously in Florida, right down lot, the road from Tallahassee. All the colors look – read to me in the stands but 100%. yeah well well you know i'm co-commiserating with you because our great football coach who i loved i watched the lsu win the national title and i go and that defensive coordinator i want him as our head coach i could just see him i go i like that guy and uh, he's our head coach but then we went down really ugly this last week you know who's to yep. say by the time this airs there may be weeks more of ugly or maybe we'll turn it around <laughs> but but man, Bay uh, Baylor University just oh, tough, 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 tough. Yeah, hats off to Texas State, but they are in a, a lower class of D one football in the Sun Belt, and so for Baylor to lose that game, I think that's a tough one to swallow. Well, you look at then you look at what Colorado State did to TCU, man. I mean, prime time, man. He brought it. He brought it. I guess he had how many sixty or more new portal transport, and then you had the kind uh, this coach. From Texas State, they brought in 53, so the, the, all these changes and all these transfers. So that's yeah. why we're calling you in here. You're in the transfer portal. We needed some <laughs> new life here in the Bear Wozniak Adventure, so we got Paul Absolutely. George in the house. Yeah, I want to hear more about your story, but first I just want to show this book. I just love the title of this book, Holy Grit. That's what we need. Uh, but I, I want to talk story just with you. Just share with us 
we like to have people really get to know who who is who the message the messenger is uh, is really as as you know God prepares the messenger then he gives them the message so what is who is the messenger tell us about your own your own grit the things in your life that uh, f- help form you or your response to the things in your life that help form you yeah I would say that uh, grit uh, I mean, for us as men, in particular, I can speak as men, is it's, it's something that we all desire. It's something that I think even is in our DNA as men. God created us with a certain grit. But grit has to be nurtured and grown. It could be a, a virtue as well. Like, there could be people who don't have it or have much of it, as you know. Uh, but I did grew up, I grew up in the country. I grew up, you know, my dad was an old Vietnam vet, tough guy. Uh, loving man. My parents divorced when I was a kid. So I spent a lot of time outdoors. And if I wanted to spend time with my dad, it was going to be hunting or fishing or camping or in the What outdoors. were you hunting for? I uh, hear uh, white tailed deer, uh, rabbit, squirrel, duck, waterfowl. No, no, like no wild boar in that area. There's no pig out there. Yes. Yes, there are. Yep. Yeah, wild boar, uh, all that kind of, you know, was sort of year round, either doing that or fishing for uh, largemouth bass. And yeah, we just, I just grew up that way. I I didn't know any different, grew up in the country. um, And, you know, grit was just the normal everyday part of life, uh, chores. Yeah, when you go hunting, you're getting up before dawn, you know, and when you're done, you're cleaning and gutting and, you know, there's all those things. Yeah. Did you yeah. did did your dad and you have uh, really any conversation? I, you were uh, uh, philosophical. I mean, you, did you learn from him by example, or did you guys have conversation? Or no, I would say it was by just you know rubbing shoulders and elbows with him. We, mm-hmm. we didn't talk a whole lot. You know, my dad's not a big talker, um, and my parents divorced when I was a kid, and so. You know, I just wanted to spend time with him. I needed that as a young man. I needed to be around my dad. And so when my parents were distant, moved apart, I I caused my parents a lot of turmoil. I was did I got in a lot of trouble. And I think at the root of that trouble was this desire to be with my dad and, and to just uh, have a father in my life, you know. So mm-hmm. he, he didn't necessarily like leave me, but the divorce caused some distance. And so um yeah when i got to spend time with him it was really precious time i got to soak in with him and 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 how how did your faith develop were you were you raised catholic or kind of sort of or or tell me about tell me about your walk uh, your journey towards uh faith in god yeah i was baptized catholic you know i think my parents weren't necessarily practicing catholics much and obviously through their divorce church became a little bit harder to sort of navigate as a family you know and uh but i grew up in a catholic community south right right yeah you know so everyone i knew was either practicing catholic or a former catholic or identified as catholic so certainly we have um all of the above here but like that was kind of the community i was raised in and so in high school, you know, I, I played a lot of sports. I was very active. But what I had found is that there was something that I was missing. I was could be very successful on the field and very miserable when I got home, and I didn't know why. Uh, I had grit. I had all the things, but I did not have God. And that search began, and I began to meet some friends who uh, went to church. I just asked them questions, and they went to a Catholic church, and they just said, hey, come with us. It's no big deal. So I started to have this slow conversion into uh, into the faith in high school, and it just happened to be through friends that were Catholic. And I kind of related to that because I was like, oh, yeah, well, I, I know what Catholic is because that's just what everybody does. But a relationship with Christ began to happen during that time. How did that happen? How did that come about? Was it just a slow burn, or did there come a moment <clears throat> of convert, a real deep conversion? I think both. Uh, they invited me on a couple of retreats, some conferences, um, and I, I went. I was so desperate. They, I mean, they could have invited me to Woodstock. I would have gone uh, at that point in my life. Uh, but uh, it just happened to be uh, a very positive thing, and, and I went and uh, heard speakers and got prayed with, and just 
I was so desperate that I gave my life to Christ at a very, you know, uh, <clears throat> a, a very just, you know, uh, vulnerable time in my life. And uh, it was, thank God. Well, you know, he's in, the, he's, in, he's in the Savior biz, right? That's what God does good. That's why he sent Jesus, right? Amen. You were smart enough to know you were kind of at the end of your rope. But, you know, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of like that, you know, my wife and I, we sail. And uh, there's every, every the, at the end of every sh- sheet or line, rope, whatever you want to call it, there's a knot at the end of it. It's called the bitter end. And when I used to sail by myself, I would always <clears throat> let out a long rope behind the boat with knots every 10 f- feet in case I fell out. Well, that last knot on that rope, of course, was called the bitter end. And sometimes you kind of get to an end of yourself. And that's, I, I know I went as a young man too, and I was 19. I'd kind of come to a point in my life where I was like, I mean, life was good in a lot of ways, like you said, but it was just like, there was a malaise. There was like, is that all there is? Then why not just sex, drugs, and rock and roll? Or like they used to say, wine, woman, and song. I kind of came to that end of myself. And that's when Jesus was knocking on the door. I could hear him knocking. We got to go, Paul. We'll be right back with more uh, of the Bear Wozniak Venture with Paul George. And we're going to talk about his cool book, Holy Grit. I guess it's based on my life. Is that what you said? That's right. (laughs) We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bear's Man Cave community and our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion? Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Let's go. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com, and also on Amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We have as my co-guide today, Paul George. I want to talk to you about my new book. It's called 12 Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? My wife's a cowgirl from Florida. And we were driving here along the beach in Waikiki going around Diamond Head. And she goes, oh, you're going to love this song. And she leans over, turns up the radio, and it's Paula Cole singing that song, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Where's my John Wayne? Where's my happy ending? You you, you raise the money. I'll take care of the kids. That That's that just kind of that traditional man-woman thing happening there. And that inspired uh, me to write this book. And it basically... A book, I think, for everyone. Women especially really dig this book. They're going to love this book. And uh, our mama bears, as we call them. Something for you to read. Something for your daughters to read. To understand really what kind of a man they're looking for. And then it's a great thing for single moms to read to their sons. And for dads to read with their sons. And and, and men to share in in, uh, in men's 
small men's groups or whatever, I go through 12 rules for manliness. There's a lot more than that, but um, the, ver- the, the book is based on the, on the cowboy days. You know, I have all my Louis L'Amour Westerns here. I have over 105 of his leather-bound books. I, got, I wrote to his, his widow, Kathleen, and said, can I use some of Louis L'Amour quotes in my book? So I quote the, quote the Bible more than Louis L'Amour, but I got a lot of Louis L'Amour quotes in here. He, his, his men were always virtuous, and the women were strong, but they found themselves sometimes in vulnerable positions, and that's when they needed that strong cowboy. We have our guest today, Paul George. By 12 Rules for Manliness, where have all the cowboys gone? You can find it anywhere books are sold. Uh, Paul George is our guest. He's written this book, Holy Grit. And in the, in, the, in the opening pages, you talk about the grit of your youth, the men that you saw, and you talk about the, that cowboy, that cowboy uh, way and the desire all men have to be heroic. So yeah. I kind of feel like you I mean, were read, were, you, were you reading my mail or something, or how did you? We're on yeah, the same page. Both, uh, there's probably a lot of cross pollination, probably a, a centralized message between your book and mine. I'm excited to read yours. Uh, I mean, you really had me uh, go in there, so uh, I'm going to get it. But I'm sure there's a lot there that we can relate to. You know, I grew up like I said, like my family and my dad's dad was. I mean, he was a cowboy for a living. He he didn't just rodeo; he raised really? horses and cattle. Really, really. I never saw him once in my whole life without a cowboy hat, boots, and jeans on it. I didn't think a man wore anything else, actually. And if I wore shorts or short pants or tennis shoes, he would uh, he would think that, th- that I was feminine. And and he like he was just you you just you know like he just had this aura about him. But uh, he wasn't a godly man. Uh, and uh, and so there was something very missing in his life. He struggled through life, although he was very hard cowboy. He had grit, and I always say, grit without God we, will leave you empty. Right, and that's ultimately what the book is about: is this is this collision and this immersion of grit with God, not not taking grit out of our life. Right, God created men to be gritty, to be tough, to fight. We're made out. We're made out courageous. of mud. We're made out of mud. Amen. We absolutely. I mean, he ripped the bone out of our side. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, we <laughs> that the, that's what we're. Bouncing. Well, he might have been you asleep know. when he took the bone out, but I bet it hurt for a couple <laughs> weeks afterwards, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, God obviously liked barbecue because uh, he took ribs. <laughs> he did do ribs. Yeah. No, I, I think it, you know my wife was a cowgirl, and she uh, she never wore anything but cowboy boots until she had to go to high school gym class. But even, yeah. you know, she was, you know, I, I, but, but have you seen that? There's a TV series we love so much. I forget what it's called about the three uh, cowboys at, in Louisiana. It's a TV series. Hmm. Oh, you got to watch it, dude. It, it, I think it's called the C- Cowboy Way or something. But they're all, turns out they're all Christians. They all develop families. And just a great story about, about these Louisiana cowboys. Nice. I have to look it up. Yeah. So, t- so tell us more about this, this, you know, grit is the, the, uh, I guess it would be the uh, virtue of, of fortitude, of coraggio, mm-hmm. you know. So um, we, we need men with grit now more than ever. Yeah, it's firmness of character. It's guts, fortitude. Grit kind of sums up a lot of these, you know, virtues. Uh, at the end of the day, it's doing hard things. And that's across a lot of lines, doing hard things as a father, as a husband, as someone who works, who, who defends, all, all those things. And men want to do hard things, but there is a culture of men who you could say are soft, who turn away from doing hard things, who leave their wives and their children, who uh, don't show up for work, who complain a lot, who uh, don't fight for truth and whatnot. So, so we are in this in this sense culturally trying to re-engage men into what they're created to do. Right? Uh, I mean, that's the work that you're you're doing, and I'm doing. And so, when I thought about the book, I was like. You know, I, I can quote all the gospel, but like, how can I really engage men into a message that will ignite this grit inside of them to lean that towards God and live the life that he really created them to? I thought to myself, like, what about real life examples, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, like Jesus, certainly. But like, at the end of the day, you and I are like, well, I can't relate to him all the way because he was perfect. <laughs> yeah. I relate well, more uh, to Peter. Uh, uh, speak and, for yourself, Paul. I'm, you know. <laughs> no, but yeah, but you know, I get it. Yeah, I know. You just like these real gritty examples. Like I think St. Paul is the, the one you use on your chapter called Grit. Yeah, St. Paul's a, a character I relate to. Just he was 
you know, a loose cannon. He was a wreck, but he, you know, when his life collided with Christ and his conversion, he didn't leave grit on the side of the road, Damascus. He took it with him and the grace began to grow. And so mm. God takes grace and moves in your grit so that you can become the man that he really wants you to be, right? And that's the beautiful example but of you, the but saints you, that, you, you, that you highlight. Can't, you can't really... <laughs> grit doesn't come from just sitting on the couch and taking, taking it. It, it you, it's, it's a man in motion. 100%. Right, and... and, and God allows us to put it those moments of the bitter end. He puts it allows us to be in circumstances where it's like you're going to lay down and roll over and die, or you're going to get up and 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 that getting up it isn't bringing yourself up by your own bootstraps, but it's it has to be a decision of your own will. And there's a verse that says, "Lord, give me the will to will." I'll give you the want. God says, "I will give you the want to to want to." So say, "God, give me the grace to want this." And then you have to act on that impulse. You have to you have to begin to move in the midst of like I know I'm getting carried away, but your dad out there in the driving rain, man. The cattle need to be taken care of. You needed to get yeah. up early in the morning, he had to stay out. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, the church teaches that grace and nature work together. You know, we mm -hmm. can't just lay around and, and grace somehow flows. <laughs> no, like grace moves us into action. A man in motion, you know, a to, man to, in to motion. Be, yeah. You know, like, do I want to be, do I want to be holy? I got to do something about it. Do I want to be a good husband, a good father? I got, I got to move. Do I want to work hard? Do I, do I want to be in shape? Do I, like what doing hard things? Yes, we all desire it, but we need the grace to move forward in that. And a lot of men are struggling and they think grit's going to save them, but it's not. They need grit and grace. You know, when yes. we were, we were riding our Harleys on, on our TV show, Long Ride Home, uh, somewhere in through the sleet, the, 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 you know, that freezing rain somewhere near New Jersey. And I look over at Tony Orban. We're stopped at a light, and he looks over at me, and it's just miserable, just miserable. And he goes, why do we like this so much? <laughs> yeah. You know, because it brings out in the wellsprings of man. If you're facing a difficult time right now in your life, think, say thank you, Lord, because I get to meet you right here. This is where... It's, it's when I'm at the end of myself that I can find you. You know, when you've got it all going on, you don't need anybody. But when, you, when you're in a, in a dead end, that's when you need and you get to. If you, re, if you say yes and you begin, I love what you said, a man in motion. You know, like, like riding a motorcycle, I've fallen twice on my motorcycle, both when I was going less than five miles an hour. Right? I can't keep up the balance when I'm not moving. If you're moving forward, God will be able to keep you in balance and he'll direct your he will direct your path. We're talking with Paul George in your book Holy Grit. Where's that mountain found? Do you know that mountain on the cover of your book? I don't. No, the the publisher designed it. I don't know if they found it, photographed it, photoshopped it. Uh, I just liked it and I was like thumbs up. Let's Me do too, it. man. Me too. It reminds me a little bit of Devil's Tower over in the, the Dakotas. you got to read the book by Father Bryce Lundgren, too, The Catholic Cowboy Way. He's a Wyoming yeah. priest. Yeah, you know I've him? seen that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got, I, I'm the, I'm the I've one never that, met him. I, I'm the one that said, I said I talked to uh, my publisher at Sophia and said, Charlie, you got to get Father Bryce to write a book. And then he wrote his book before I could get mine out. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's a priest. You know how busy they are. Paul George, where can people find you? Uh, easy, paulgeorge.la. Oh, for for Louisiana, Paul George, uh, yeah. uh, he, he he's he's spoken over two million people, uh, and he works with not just um, not you know to churches and the men's conferences, and also works with businesses too to help them find their way too. Uh, we'll be right back with more of the their their way. What I mean by that is their purpose, their identity, and then a path uh, you know towards success. We're talking with Paul George. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is Daniel the Boone Markham with another episode of Country uh, Stars. I think the first movie star I ever met was Paul Newman. Met several others since then. Not too enamored by most of them, though. Then there's them self-centered ones called divas or the male version called devos. Those are real words. Look them up. 
Strange word, diva, means a female deity. Yeah, mm hmm. Now, I could go somewhere with that, but I'll resist and saunter on back to my main train of thought. It was back in 96 when I was executive director of a pioneering sustainable development nonprofit outfit called the Willapaw Alliance, when Paul Newman flew onto Willapaw Bay in a large two engine seaplane then transported by an oyster dredge to the port of Nakata, where a bunch of us met up at a local oysterman's home. Decent man, that Paul Newman. While famous for roles in such movies as Cool Hand Luke and Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, he was a real star to me because of what he did with his fame and fortune. Much of it, some $500 million worth, has gone to needy children and to provide sustainable drinking solutions around the world for the destitute. Seems to me anyone is a star who takes his or her life and makes something of it for others. You may say, well, I'm just a work-at-home mom. Shoot, darn, that's more important than anything I can think of. Besides, it seems to me that moms get more good done in this world than any other gaggle of folks. So whatever your role in life is, use it to help others along the path of life. That'll make you a star in God's eyes and those you serve. This is Daniel the Boone Market. Country.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Our guest today is Paul George. You know, Paul, my dad was uh, a little bit, reminds me a little bit what you do. He was a, he was a public speaker just one of the best and he was a great homeless as a deacon but he used to have presidents of companies come to his home when he had his home in montana or he had one in the north woods of minnesota and then his home here in hawaii presidents of companies would come out because eagles tend to fly alone and they kind of need to gather sometimes and he would help them do it sounds like what you do where you help people you help a business define who they are what their purpose is and can you just for a moment touch on what you do in in that part of your your uh it's really a ministry more than a yeah it's really a ministry but what i what i do is i help organizations companies leadership teams come up with clarity on their vision and mission their core values their strategic moving forward how they work together and communicate as a team uh and so ultimately like organizational health and clarity is how, what i would say uh, and so, you know, I, that just is a passion for mine is, you know, obviously in my own life, it's sort of been my life's journey to, to find that clarity uh, for my own life and what I'm doing and what God's calling me to do, how to, how to be a good husband and father, how, how to just have clarity in my life. Obviously, all through the lenses of, you know, relationship with Christ for me has been essential to that. Uh, you know, in my book, too, we talk about... Uh, every man has to have a code, a creed he can live by. John Wayne said that. Probably stole it from Louis L'Amour. I forget who was the actual author, but the code is just that couple. I was, I see. I say the creed is one of those. Is that one or two word 
sentence like mine is that the most radical quest a man can pursue in life is to abandon himself to the wild adventure of God's will so that's my creed but then the code is how I purpose to live those out but the rules I will live by I'm a Benedictine oblate you know the the rules of Saint Benedict for example um, but there's a there's there's that code that a man must live by and I think you do a good job of that in this book Holy Grit as you take examples of men saints and you use them as examples of the different, different, uh, the different, um, I guess, areas of grittiness. Can we walk through some of these examples? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'd love that. Uh, we have a job, Thomas More. Yeah, I love that. A man has to have a job. Even Jesus said, "My Father and I, we wor- even now we work." To work to yeah. have a job is the is the dignity of a man. Yeah, yeah. What I love about uh, St. Thomas More, you know, for, for me as a man, like I want a real life example. And and so these saints are, were real men, lived real lives. They had real struggles. Well, tell us the about More. As, tell us a little bit about More's life and then his, the example, how you're using him in your Yeah, book. what I was fascinated about as I just read about him and learned more about him is that, uh, you know, he was a professional. He was a sir in, in the king's court. He was a, a very successful man. He was married twice. His first wife passed away. So he was a, a a widower for a while, and then you know remarried another holy woman. So he had a very holy sacramental. Was marriage. he a counselor to the king too? He was very he was a, right. Yeah, he was he was right in, one of his main guys, right? Yeah, yeah. It just in the tight circle with the king. I mean, a very trusted counselor, um, and but very faithful Catholic, and uh, was practicing his faith. Um, and when the king didn't want to obey the church and didn't want to follow the teachings. Uh, Thomas More challenged him and said, you know, I'm not going to bend to what I believe. And the king ultimately uh, beheaded one of his best friends. Um, Thomas More. Yeah. Thomas More. Yeah. And, uh, you know, his family even begged him and said, look, just just go along with it, like to save your life and to spend more time with us. And if he would have done that, we wouldn't be talking about him today. We wouldn't even known him. Mm. And so tell me what his example is to you when you say we have a job. What's our job? Well, our job is one, you know, what we learn from him is that he he um, he didn't sacrifice his family for his work. He put his family first. And that, that is a beautiful example of our vocation. But he was also very successful at his job. And, and uh, he but he did it the right way. He didn't leave virtue or his creed, as you were talking about, at the door like that was in his DNA. And he wasn't mm. willing to bend, bend that creed even for his boss or his king. He was willing to sacrifice everything for what he truly believed. And so, you know, the the gospel for us as men can't be in boxes. We can't compartmentalize our faith. Well said. Amen. Right? Like we can't live it here and not here. So Thomas More really kind of helps you see an integrated faith. He lived it in all areas of his life, and you just really kind of highlights that. And you talk about fighting our spiritual battles. I, I think that, you know, one of my titles is A Man's Got to Be Dangerous, you know. And, uh, and, and uh, you, you should, Jesus, Jesus should know you, but does the enemy know you? Or does he not even take, take notice of you? Or do you do spiritual? How, do, how does a man go about, uh, would you say, in this realm of spiritual warfare? Yeah. Well, I mean, the sacraments, mass, confession, all those, you know, the grace surrounds us, the rosary, uh, you know, uh, scapular devotions, but praying every day, you know, and praying specifically for spiritual protection over yourself, your marriage and your children every day. Uh, And you don't have to be a professional prayer to do that. It's very simple. Um, The devil uh, will scatter. At, at your authority through Jesus Christ. So mm. don't worry about it. Don't stress about it. But make sure that you claim the blood of Jesus over you. Over your family. You know, when people walk in our house, the crucifix is right over the front door, you know, and just praying, uh, g- getting holy water and sprinkling it over your children, over your home. You know, Satan is a rebel. He's a punk. You know, he hates authority. And the authority, there's no greater authority than, than, the, than, than of course, God himself. But the, the authority that he gave to us in the church, in, in the apostolic succession, in that holy water, it just drives them crazy. I, you know, the, the, one of the questions I ask men is, are you one of those people who, when you get up in the morning, the devil says, oh, no? Hmm. 
Are you, you know, it, Jesus said, Jesus said, I'm, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against us. Well, gates don't attack people. People will ask me, are you under, when you're out riding those motorcycles, do you ever come under spiritual attack? And I go, never. We're on the attack. You know, we mm-hmm. may face resistance, but as men, we should be on the attack. Yeah, there's nothing the devil wants more than a man who's just living a very mediocre, apathetic life, right? Like when you're not on attack mode in your life, you're living with a mission and a sense of a purpose, and you're just kind of just mediocre in your life, just apathetic. The devil's one. We're just sitting on the sideline on the couch. You know, we're mm. not a man in motion, as we we're talking about in the I earlier. I love that. Side. I love it. Man in motion. You know, they they say that. Say, Aquinas said that. Uh, God is fully actualized, you know, or, and he's, he's active. He's, the word he used to describe God is he's active. You know, God isn't sitting up there with his hands across. His, you know, he's, he's <laughs> even now the Father and I, we work. God is active. So a, a dormant man vis-a-vis a man who is in motion. Now, I don't mean yep. just, I don't mean physical motion. Well, probably that too, but just a man should be a man of action. But we get that, we get that, as you talked about, we get that by our times of prayer and reflection. If you don't start out your day in prayer mm. and, and meditating on God's Word or reading wonderful, rich books like this, the, this book, Holy Grit, the, your book prompts men to have a conversation with themselves and with God, you know? Yeah. Um, if you're not doing that, then you're walking around in circles. But if all you're doing is, oh, I have a really devoted prayer life, but you're, if you're not doing anything that, let's put it this way, my dad used to say you should have a trajectory in in your life that causes you to have to grow to become that. If you're not on the if you're not if you're not moving forward in an area that challenges you and causes you to grow in the virtues and and in skills and other areas of your life, you know, a, a man's a man's world should expand. The Bible says I will expand your tent pegs. You know, a man's world should expand and you do that by by pushing out against the boundaries and pursuing pursuing, you know, God's will. Uh, you, t- you mentioned here also, uh, I love this. This is kind of the heart of it, really. St. Ignatius of Loyola embracing who we are, who we are with. Yeah. yeah. Love that. Saint, yeah, St. Ignatius talks a lot about our identity as God's sons, you know, living out that identity. Um, and I love his story. You know, he, he wasn't a believer. He was a lieutenant in the army. And that's all he ever uh, he wanted had, to be. He wanted to be a warrior, he right? To be. Yeah. He was a warrior. And and so he had grit and he had it all. Uh, and he he was wounded on the battlefield with a cannonball, uh, which is a pretty gritty story. Uh, he lived to tell. They thought he was going to die. And on his deathbed, uh, he the only thing to read on his bedside table was sacred scripture and lives of the saints. And he had a conversion on his on, in the infirmary and left that. Uh, infirmary with a new sense of his mission and purpose in life. Yeah, we, we're gonna, we got to come back, Paul, in a second. Paul George's book, Holy Grit. Yeah, it's so true. Sometimes we feel like we have a we ide- we have an identity built on you know what we're doing or who we you know our mission you know our, our work or whatever, and suddenly that's taken away from us you know through an injury or whatever else. Then you find out who you really are, who you really are. And uh, to me, the essence of a man is well on my desk. The essence of a dangerous man is someone who prays the prayer, thy will be done. And in that we find, I love this, because in that you find you're embracing not only who you are, but who you are with. We're going to talk more about St. Ignatius with Paul George, my new best friend, uh, in his book, Holy Grit. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. 
Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak Adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Bear and Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. still listening i thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station while well, you asked for it here is more of the bear wasnick adventure aloha everyone you know we call our show the bear wasnick adventure that, that that's because each of us is on an adventure and you get you're just kind of listening in a little bit to mine and, and and the adventures that my guests are on. We're talking with Paul George. I really dig this guy. Even uh, you know, even though he left out, is your full name? I'm not going to say the joke. I'm not. I'm After not going to Beatles. What were you going to say? I'm not going to say it. Okay. I'm Don't biting my it. tongue. We'll just, we'll just leave. <laughs> we'll all leave the it hanging there, and they know what we're saying. Edge. But I caught myself <laughs> not going to say it. But Paul George. Uh, uh, your uh, your book, Holy Grit. I love this statement, embracing who we are, and then you put the word with. Who are we with? How do we find our identity, our true identity? We, you know, we read in Scripture, Jesus is baptized. The Lord speaks to him directly. He's my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. You know, Jesus hadn't accomplished anything in his life at that point. He hadn't began his ministry. He hadn't done anything important. And yet God looks at him and speaks his identity as his son, right? Mm. At our baptism, God speaks those same words. This is this, I claim you as my child, it, divine filiation. You know, you are mine. You mm. have my name written on your heart. You know, all of us men have that. God has claimed us as his own. We're his sons. And, you know, when you have sonship, in Jesus, you have a sense of real purpose because you're not looking for your identity in other things. And every man has struggled with that. We look for our identity, you know, in work and in production and in popularity and in power and in sexuality, you name it. We, you know, but in our identity, when we know our identity in God, we, we, we look to him for fulfillment. He, he has, has, you know, I'll say, if I'm God's son, then that means God is my father. In Hawaiian, the name for father is Makua. And uh, I, was, I had this, this new beautiful habit I've had for the last few months where I, I go out every day for an hour and I swim. You know, I do all my surfing, whatever, but I go out for an hour and I really just tread water in the, where, the, where there's big kind of waves rolling. And I just pray. My wife comes out with me for a short while. Then I just meditate on the Lord. And the other day I was praying to the Father which sometimes, I don't know if you have that difficulty, but it's hard to pray to God the Father because of the challenges in our own young life, you know. And at one point I just said, God, thank you for making me the way you made me. And realize God is really my Father. He chose to infuse that unique spiritual soul with all the kind of like the desires or the inklings or the inclinations and uh, the, the skills, the capabilities. You know what I'm trying to talk about, aptitude and attitude. He made me a certain way for a certain purpose. And I said, thank you for the way you made me, God. You're my father. And I hope I can fulfill the purpose. That would make me happier. But just thank you for the way you made me. In the book here, you talk about the true identity. But then you go to the next chapter, uh, Padre Pio, who's about the grittiest guy in the world, right? And he's talking about discovering, discovering God's plan, a path with a purpose. We're not just... Pa Dude, I know I'm talking a lot. I got to get you back on my show within the next few months. But when we went, when we went to um, road through uh, Big Bend country, you don't pass through there. It's on the way to nowhere. You got to intend. Yeah. I'm going to go go to that place, 
And that's a, I think so many people are just passing through. What, what do you mean by having God's plan that has a purpose, a path with a purpose? Yeah, I mean, we, we, men are, we're created to live with a sense of mission and purpose, and our vocation sets us up for that. But like, you know, Scripture tells us, uh, you know, without a vision, we will perish. You know, I mean, I, there, there's a, a beautiful place here, the Jesuit spirituality, the Jesuits founded it here when they first came to the country. So there's, there's grave sites of Jesuits who died in like the early 1800s, who, who came here to bring the gospel, knowing that they would never go back to where they came from, France or wherever it was that they journeyed here. And there's this one headstone, there's no name on it. And it just says, he was last seen in Sri Lanka. Like he, he, like he went there with the thought, I'm never coming back. Mm. And he lost his life there spreading the gospel. This was like years and years and mm. years ago. And it really caught me, last seen in Sri Lanka. Really? Wow. Yeah, oh, it's just on his headstone. That's it. They never found him. And I thought, like, that's how we're called to live. Like, do we live with a sense of mission to where, like, what do you want to be last seen doing? Yeah. What do you want to be last seen known as, right? Like, he was last laying seen. on the couch, like, like wasting your life away. Hell no! Like, you know, like men are created with a sense of like, send me to Sri Lanka. I may never come back. That is what ignites us. That's what our mission is in our life. Well, I got to ask you a question. I'm seeing you surrounded by these. The I, I used to do this too in my office have these big you have big posters on the back and, and, oh, and yeah. there's things right in, written on them and then also on the side are those are those what is that is that plans and purposes or what what, what the, it looks like you've got something going yeah, on I there. Help, uh, i do a lot of strategic planning help people kind of right. map out where they want to go right yeah. that's what that uh, I so can, I, yeah and we need to do that in our own personal lives absolutely and you talked about with this creed idea, you know, what I hope people even on their personal level, like what's your specific mission for your life? You know, you and I are going to die and everyone else, what are they going to say about us? You know, that we didn't do hard things, that we were lazy, that we wouldn't fight for our family, our friends, our kids, the, the, the culture that we just wasted our life away. Like, no, like that's not what we're called for. And God calls us to something greater. That's what I love about the saints in the book is that they were just normal humans, but yet the grace of God moved them to do hard things, and we're still talking about them today. Yeah, yeah, no, the, the um, I have these all these little brown books on my shelf. I'll just reach and grab one. There, th- these books. When I start, I write, I write in them inclinations from the Lord, and then eventually they become goals, and then they become realities. And uh, I'm just thinking about that. Um, uh, yeah, we need to have, there's a certain telos, a certain purpose that we have to be like Christ. And there's a certain, there's certain sense of who we are, and the sort of things that we can do, should do and can do. But we actually can discern on that and, and, and begin to follow a path. You can write out your goals and, and, uh, and then remember you write in pencil, God writes in ink, but God will adjust it. But you, the, the, the very, the very, uh, essence of of this book i you kind of save it lord towards the end is um of of just abiding in god's love we can as men we can get talk carried away talking about being tough and being gritty and being but it really goes that comes down to love yes absolutely and love is not only given it's received just like in our own marriages you know uh and with god uh, an active man is also a man who receives receptivity of god's love receiving others you know, and so for us as men, that might be something hard to learn, but it's important because uh, we we're active in, in also how we receive love. Act. What do you mean by that? Active. Well, it, it is very active. Like we, we have to say yes to God. That, that is a yes. That is a, an active. It, it is opening of our heart to receive him. And, you know, um, we can't just always be doers we have to be receivers like if you just Mm. never received your wife's love there would be a sense of disconnect uh and Mm. so as men we have to learn to receive love as well that of course is a sense of vulnerability Mm. that often we as men sort of reject as soft vulnerability isn't being soft because we can only give after we receive yeah you know we're, we're not human doers we're human beings we need to be 
uh, we need to know that first God just loves us. He made us. Yeah. He loves us. Not so much for what we do, but, you know, first for who, because we're made in his image and, and, and for who we are. But, you know, as a man with love, you know, <laughs> Bryce Lundgren, Father Bryce was talking about how if he was out riding the range with Zeke on the on their horses and he said to Zeke, hey, Zeke, you know, we need to kind of learn to be a little bit more vulnerable with each other. He said Zeke would ride, head, head, he'd be over the mountain before he could. But if men can get gritty and real with each other, and just really talk about real stuff, being open to that kind of love too between brothers. In Hawaii, we I, very rare. I walk walk along the we'll walk along the beach in Waikiki or be out and be out surfing, and a man doesn't say, "Hey, bear, love you." You know, we do that here in Hawaii, and we mean it. It's not just a aloha itself means to love. Can you just talk for one moment about brotherhood? And we got it. Then we got to get you back on our show. Yeah, I, we could do this all day. I, I mean, we we're not called to live life alone. I mean, we, you know, Satan, we talked about earlier, the devil wants to isolate us, separate us. Mm. And, you know, we're, we're not meant to fight battles alone. No great battle or war was, you know, you know, conquered alone. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And, and so we, we do need brothers. We need to link arms with other men who are going to make us the, and help us become the best version of who God wants us to be. And that's pushing us. I need guys to push me to do hard things mm. to to face hard deadlines and overcome obstacles that i have ignored now i often say like if you're if you're struggling right now uh if you're in a tough place the best way out of that is to actually do the hard things like it moves us out of ourselves the catechism yes. said sin turns us in on ourselves right yes. we face inward when we struggle to get out of our struggles to move outward to love others to do hard things to to go surf, go work out, go in the woods, you like go, yeah, like go just go do, do the hard thing and fail at it. It's better than not doing it at all. Hundred percent. Fail over and over, and I guarantee you you'll feel great about it. We gotta go, uh, Paul. We gotta go, dude. We'll have you uh, back. The name of the book by Paul George is Holy Grit. You can get it anywhere or his website is Paul George is it Paul dot George or Paul George? Paul George at LA. Dot LA for Louisiana. Don't get that. Yep. But we, we're, we're, we've run over time. Uh, Paul, thanks for being with us. I, until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell. Thank you.